I have only a, a few minutes, and I want to tell you who I am, but also tell you the secret formula, the secret equation of Silicon Valley innovation. Uh, so I'm Rob Spiro. Um, I just moved to Nantes uh, about a year ago. But before that, I was in Silicon Valley for about 10 years. Um, I started a company about uh, 10 years ago that was called Aardvark. Aardvark is an animal, I think in French it's tamanoir, uh, that eats the fourmi. Uh, <laughs> and Aardvark was a, a search engine, moteur de recherche. And uh, we built Aardvark, and we had this idea that you could build a better search engine using your social network. That instead of finding a web page, you could find the knowledge inside the heads of the people you know and the people that they know. Uh, and so we didn't know exactly what the product was or what the solution was. We just had this general idea. And so we started testing things. We had an idea. We would build a very fast prototype. We would try it. And we would see what happened. Uh, and the, the, the challenge was, how can we build our prototypes very, very fast? Because we know that. Uh, it might not work. It probably won't work exactly the way we want it to. But we're going to learn. We're going to learn from the users. Uh, what do they like? What don't they like? And then we're going to do a better version for the second version. And so uh, we did this at Aardvark. We built, I think it was eight versions of Aardvark. On our eighth version, it took us maybe a year. So almost once a month or every two months, we had a new version of Aardvark uh, that we built that was totally different. And it was very fast. So we weren't actually building the full technology. We were kind of faking it uh, in the background. Uh, is there, do we know the Wizard of Oz in France? Is the same, does it exist in France? Yeah? There's a, there's a wizard, uh, and everybody thinks it's magic. And in the end, if you haven't uh, read the book or seen the movie, I'm going to tell you the end. Uh, in the end, it's just a, it's just a man behind a, a curtain, behind a, a rideau. Uh, and this is the, the theory of how we tested our ideas for Aardvark. We, we tested it by faking the technology, the magic, um, with a very small number of people. And by the eighth time, we had invented something that really worked, that people liked, and so we invested to actually build the technology to make the real, the real magic. Uh, and it worked, and we worked for a few years. We created a team uh, of around 35 people uh, in San Francisco working on this product. Uh, zero shift affair, uh, the Silicon Valley style. Uh, <laughs> because the, the goal was to build a cool technology, and later, once we have millions of users, we would find a way to make money. Uh, and after uh, almost three years, we were purchased by Google. Google bought Aardvark for $50 million. Uh, and so we went to work for Google the next day. Uh, and we were very, very excited. And I became a, a product manager at Google. And I had a team, my team of 35 people became a team of 400 people within Google. Uh, it's a massive company, uh, and we built a product called Google Hangouts, which is video chat, uh, and then we built a product called Google Plus, which is the social network of Google, and then I, I decided that uh, I love startups, starting with zero uh, and just uh, having your own ideas, and so I left Google, and I started a new company called Good Eggs. And good eggs, uh, we had the same process. We had an idea for an opportunity. We think we can build a better supermarket, a better marché, using local producers, the, the small uh, farmers and chefs who don't really sell through the supermarket. And we can use technology 
to create a more efficient supply chain and create a new supermarket. And we have no idea how or what it looks like. And we did the same thing. We had a, a crazy idea and we tested it. And we had this grocery service. Uh, and when people ordered on our grocery service for the first test, I would go to the supermarket and I would buy the food and I would put it in a new package and I would deliver it. Because we were testing and we, we, it was fake. It was totally fake. But we learned. We learned what people like, what don't they like, very quickly. And we got better. And our second version was better. And our third idea was better. And our fourth idea was even better. Because each time, we kept learning. And finally, by our seventh idea, we had something that people loved. And so then we started to invest and make it real. And we built this company. And today, Good Eggs uh, does, has around 250 employees in San Francisco. And we're doing close to $1 million of chief d'affaires uh, par semaine. And uh, it's working very well. And I was able to grow with this company and become the, the PDG of this big company. And I, I had the same uh, idea that I had at Google, which is that actually I like startups. I like starting new things and that there's someone else who's going to be a better CEO, PDG of this company. And so I hired a new PDG, and I moved to Nantes. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to tell you the, the secret formula of innovation that we use in, in Silicon Valley. The formula is this, that you start with a goal. And the goal has to be inspiring. It has to be something that you really want to achieve, not just because it's going to make a lot of money, although that's nice, but also because you want, you want this to exist in the world. You think that the world would be better with this. You think that your life would be better with this uh, for many reasons. And so you have this goal. The second part of the formula is a team. You need really talented people. And it depends what you're building. It could be uh, people working in marketing or business. It could be, and usually in Silicon Valley, we're talking about software engineers. Almost always, we're talking about designers, people who are really talented with design process and tools. And so you have this team, and you have this goal. And the secret is to come up with ideas and try your ideas very quickly and to learn from them. And mostly the way we learn from ideas is kind of obvious. We talk to the users. Sometimes people call this a focus group. In Silicon Valley, it's something we do every week. Every week. We bring users in to our office, or we go visit our users, and we talk to them. And there's a rule with, uh, with web websites and, and apps. And the rule with websites and apps is that if you talk to five people, you're going to learn 80% of the problems. It's not that many people. It's not statistics. You don't need 1,000 people. It's not a survey. It's real conversations, face-to-face, Five conversations, 80% of the problems. And so if you are able to take your idea and make, build it a, a test very quickly and talk to people, then you can build a new idea that's even better based on what you learned. And if the team of talented people is working towards this inspiring goal and they're getting better every time because they're learning, then eventually, Maybe it takes two tries, maybe it takes a hundred tries. Eventually you're going to create something because you're learning so much along the way. And that's, that's the formula. And the other piece of the formula is that you need capital, you need money, because you need to pay salaries for the people until you find the idea and until the idea starts to make money. And when we raise money in Silicon Valley, when we invest 
money when we, raise, when we do a fundraising, it's almost always for salaries for talented people. We invest in, in human capital and we invest in learning because the more you have talented people who are learning, the more you're going to innovate towards your goal. That's, that's the secret. Thank you very much.